ask him about that, but he he doesn't play anything. Fair enough. Um, since he's been doing tattoos and stuff, like he doesn't like. He actually is. Uh, um, he was telling me about trying to exit the music scene, actually, because he's big on tattoos right now. Okay, uh, that's fair. But um, but you know that that that's one of my boys. Shout out to Machete Gator. Get, yeah, who does does his do thing? You know, he's out in uh, San Antonio and uh, Nebraska, Nebraska and somewhere else, somewhere else. I forgot. I think Mexicans Oklahoma. abroad. That my my boy is all all over the place. Yeah, man. Shut Don't you, only a certain people call him by his real name, and everybody else is Machete Gator. Shout Super out to brown fun. people in weird places. Damn, <laughs> we out here. <laughs> get our next track she's automatic she's automatic what do you guys think about this track it's it is a classic Lars Fredrickson guitar riff mm -hmm. it's a it's a classic Lars Fredrickson song it, it has like a bastards feel to it it can be you know that kind of thing it's like that real rock and rolly type feel like it's just like uh, like like I feel like this song is just like something that is not. It, it, I feel if I, if I would listen to it and you would tell me like, "Yo, this is a this is a Ranson song," I'd be like, "Nah, this is a Lars Ferguson the Bastard song." Yeah, it, it definitely has that vibe. It's it, but like I said, it still has that Matt Freeman vibe to it, so it's still a little bit different. And then you know, with the Bastards will be playing, and then <clears throat> it's just another another like mid tempo punk song. Just like another filler song it, and stuff. Yeah, like I mean, the the lyrics and the hook are kind of like, I don't know. It's it it doesn't really go anywhere. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. Well, it feels very like something that could have could, it could have been on Let's Go. You yeah. know, like one yeah. cycle ride or one of those more like classic like. You know, fucking three chord like three chord uh, punk, yeah. Punk, punk but it, it's also very just rancid. It's it's, yeah. it's the rancid sound. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's what you expect of it. It's like it's like I said. If you're on a road trip and you're listening to this shit, you don't. That's when you don't skip it. The Scar Rib Old Friend. Old Friend. Have you ever seen them play this live? Yes. I it actually. Fucking rips, um, like. I, I don't think I've ever told you yet. Well, I don't think I've ever told you. I think I've told you. I bought this old um, videotape at the San Isidro Swap Meet that had uh, uh, the No Effects um, Warp Tour performance and it had Rancid's. Um, no effect performance from ninety eight. So so I actually had to um 
actually <laughs> heard this song live for the first time and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was like, oh shit, that show is dope. And um, that's where I heard um, Life Won't Wait, a lot of different tracks. And um, and this was one of them. And I was just like, Phew. easily one of my fucking favorite songs. Uh, a lot of artists have uh, from the UK have, uh, I think, have covered this song and stuff. Uh, I know Amy Winehouse earlier uh, covered this song. Really? Yeah. Like I've... in her early, early, early fucking, oh, like... Um, coming up a lot of people don't know that amy winehouse loves ska she actually played with the specials yeah she had some cool tracks yeah she had some fucking cool uh rock steady tracks in her in her albums which i i'm still i still admire to this day and i still love her for for those fucking tracks dude like definitely gone too soon yeah 27 club right 27 club dude that was a weird club yeah it's a weird club. It's not right? funny. I no, I know. I mean, we laugh about it now <laughs> because it's like fuck. But it's like it's a nervous laugh. Like goddamn, like we lost so many people in 2007. Like fuck, dude. I mean, people over here. But I don't know. That was that was a tough one. It sucks when you see somebody go to like something like addiction or anything. Yeah. You know, because it it doesn't have to be that way. But at the same time, maybe that's what was giving us this great art. I don't know. Yeah. You know and mean? we made it pre- we appreciate it more yeah I mean you just gotta be thankful for what you've been given you know yeah. and, and shout out to Amy Winehouse shout out to Amy Winehouse man who shout gave out. us who gave us some rock steady uh, songs off her albums and stuff and they tried to make her go to rehab and she said no 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 <laughs> but uh, thoughts on this song guys it's fucking it, it rips like you're saying like you get like I feel like this is like the type of song you put in a, in a at a punk show and everybody starts like kind of like skanking, you know. When with this song, like I think when I was younger, like Time Bomb and like Olympia and stuff like that, those are my favorite songs off this album because they were a little bit more like bright. Mm-hmm. As I got older, like just like lyrically, I think this became more of my favorite because it kind of felt more relevant as I got older, like. Like, you're like an old friend coming to see me again. Like, it's like, it's because you know that bad times and heartache itself yeah. are, are, you know, are they're, they're right? coming. They're, they, you know what I mean? Whether you like it or not, it's going to come. As high as you go in life, is yeah. as low as you're going to go in life. And this is kind of a song that pervades that. But, you know, the upbeat tempo of it almost kind of gives you like a weird optimistic feel to it. It doesn't feel like a fucking drag, you know? Yeah. It's just like, you know, you have to get along like like an old friend yeah coming to see me again because i know <laughs> it's gonna come but i know i'm gonna be out of this eventually you know what i yeah. mean and it's a good track for that you know what i yeah. mean as a as a weathered adult who's seen some dumb shit now <laughs> no dude i i totally get where you're coming from uh i've i feel the same way as far as like um you you always have to expect the worst to get the best result I guess if it makes it makes sense to me, um, but I think when they were writing this shit, I feel like they were like talking about that about how like you know you she your your um, your bad vibes always come back, the bad shit always come back, you know, like a karma song. I feel. What or do you think, just, or just um, sadness in yeah. general, you know, mm-hmm. like it's inevitable. Yeah. You're gonna feel it at some point, and and uh, yeah, I think Adrian kind of hit the nail on the head with saying like it. This song is something that you appreciate as you've gone through life, and you're now seasoned, and yeah. you've, and you've experienced all these these things. You go back and you listen to something like this, and you're like, wow, now I know, now I get it. Yeah. You know that little light bulb goes on, and it's a it's a beautiful thing. And, and structurally, this this song is very catchy, yeah. fun. And uh, I can, you know, and live it's amazing. Yeah. You got that little, you know, the that little guitar riff is yeah. fucking mm. great. This shit comes on, I'm fucking hopping in the pit like yeah. immediately, like I'm dropping my shit and like <laughs> <laughs> whatever I'm doing, it yeah. doesn't matter. It's one of those.
Disorder and disarray. Right? Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of a little, gives you that pop punk uh, feel, kind of, with a little bit of uh, street punk riffs in there. If I'm not mistaken, the cru- the crucified is like a reference to like skinhead culture and yeah. like, you know, the crucified skinhead and the whole bit of like being crucified for your sins and being prejudged before anybody knows yeah. who you are. That's kind of what, as a skin or a punk, is kind of what that notion is. Is a song about, you know, <clears throat> about presenting yourself to the public and having like a preconceived notion of you before anybody knows like, who you are, what you're doing, or anything like that. You're being like, crucified. Yeah. Like you could be like a a fucking uh, have a bachelor's degree and like whatever fucking field and because you dress this way people think that you're um, nothing dirt bag that you no know, doesn't amount to anything mm-hmm. which is on the contrary bro a lot of people don't know that punks uh, punk culture in general is about being anti-politic and also being um, being uh, able to have a human spirit involved in it um, because uh, when somebody falls, you know, we pick them up and stuff. We're just when forward so, thinking, man, you know what like, I mean? Like, like, we're just, like, in a whole different field, you know, as far as, far as like, uh, a lot of people who consider themselves uh, normal, say, quote-unquote, normal and shit, uh, or progressive and stuff, we were doing it way before everybody, you know. And uh, shout-out to all the punks out there, bro, who keep us who keep us alive and shit. I guess just trying to be uh, um, decent human beings, you yeah. know? It's just about... And it's not... Punk, for me, has never been about fashion rather yeah. than... You know, it's like a state of mind. Yeah. It's just the, the way you are. And, and I guess, like you said, your your spirit, you know what I mean? Yeah. There is, is, there's no way... There shouldn't be a dress code or anything like that. It's just because you didn't have spiky hair or were drinking Mickey 40s doesn't mean you weren't a punk, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, you know, we all were our own different people and brought our own different thing to the scene. That That's what used to make the scene so great, is when you saw everybody, you kind of knew their thing and knew who they were because yeah. we were all... When you would talk to everybody, everybody was just a bunch of fucking kids with problems at home who just found, you know, sanction in friends. You know what I yeah. mean? It was a bunch of kids... Like, we would all figure out whose house was the coolest to stay at that night. We would just all do that. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah. Like, we just all felt safe around each other. And, yeah. you know, there was these small groups of, of friends who were like that back then. And that was the yeah. scene, you know what I mean? And and That's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I do feel where you're coming from on this track. And it's just like, it really is sometimes. Like, we get, um, and again, that's why I want to break the barrier of, like, all these, um, uh, I would say, cholo-like individuals judging the punk um the punk and skin and our rude boy community like as we're different or just because we we like a certain music and we choose to represent it outside um doesn't mean that we're not any less or any greater than um some of the guys in the barrio and shit and um which which was accepted uh, actually when we when i was uh when i was photographing these girls i just saw a bunch of different photographers like oh my god like can I take a picture of them? I'm like, dude, we'll do whatever. You know, that's like, um, mm-hmm. there was a, that's what they're here for, like yeah. to change the notion. And I'm here to, to break the breaker of the wheel. I'm like the nearest Targaryen, the break of the wheel. It was rad. I feel like those pictures went like low pro viral around the city. Like I feel like I saw that a lot, like everywhere. And those were, and that was a good shoot, man. It was, it was, it was cool imagery. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. because it felt like, like I said, like we were saying earlier, I felt like it was us. Like, like that is exactly who the fuck we are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, as, as juxtaposed and as fucking.